Have you ever tried to ping a host on your network that you know is alive and well, but it doesn't respond to that ping? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use a different method to the standard way to see if the host is up on a network. Okay, I'm going to ping a host now that I know is alive. And here we can see in the captures the ping request going out, but no response coming back. Okay, so initially you'd think, okay, the host isn't live on the network. Now let's have a closer look. You can see, oop, it just popped up there. If I just stop this ping for a minute and stop the capture, you can see that we did an ARP request saying, uh, who, where is it basically? Who's got the address that I'm trying to ping, which is dot, dot 12. And we got a response from a host saying dot 12 is at this MAC address. So it did the ARP, but failed the ping. Okay, ARP works at layer two, but the ping works at layer three. So given that it responds to the ARP request, we know it's on the same broadcast domain here. But given that it doesn't respond to the ping request, we can say that that host has blocked the ping response at its firewall. Now the host I'm talking about here in this example is the uh, Tesla car. So Tesla have obviously made it so it doesn't respond to pings. So I'm going to go through a different method where, given that it responds to ARP, we can still see if it's on the network. So we'll have a closer look at the ARP response. So initially, it did a, um, an ARP request. Now, first of all, it doesn't know where that IP address is. It doesn't know which MAC address has it. So it has to send a broadcast out. And you can see that in layer two here, you can see that the destination is all the F, so it's a broadcast. So it's to anyone who's got the address. Now, if we have a closer look just while we're there, you can see the ether type is 806, which means it's an ARP. Okay, that tells it the next info is all about ARP. So what's in the ARP request? Well, we've got our source MAC address from where I sent the ARP request and our IP address. And well, we don't know the MAC address of the destination. That's what we're after. And the destination address of 1.12. So that's why we broadcast this out and said, who has 1.12? Tell me here. Now when the ARP response came back, it's pretty similar. It just said, it's just filled in the gaps basically saying, oh yeah, I'm at this MAC address. Okay, and it came back unicast because it knows that it was sent from this MAC address so it just came directly. Uh, the only difference you might see is the padding. And that's simply because the minimum ethernet frame is 64 bytes. So as you can see, it's 60, but that's because the FCS got stripped off before it came to this computer. But where was the padding when I sent it out? You can see it's only 42. Well, there's 18 bytes of padding because it has to make up that 64 to, to go out. But when, when this computer constructed the ARP, that wasn't there, that's done at the network drive. So this didn't catch that. But that's the reason you might see padding on packets, oh, sorry, frames coming in, but not going out. But anyway, don't worry about the padding. That's just there to, to make up the size. The main thing is it responds to ARPs and they happen at layer two. So given that I know that host is on the same broadcast domain as, as this host here, basically my network, I can use the ARP to see if the host is alive rather than ICMP, which is being blocked on the car. So as you know, if I go to uh, ping it, there's no response to those ping requests, okay? And that yellow highlight is just expert info, apparently just saying there's no ping response. Okay, the ARP's still there. We've now got a unicast ARP because this machine's already learnt where it is but it's not responding to pings. So what we can do instead is run ARP ping. And when we do that, it's the same sort of concept. It's just a way to see if the host is there, but it's happening using ARP. Now, if you look, look here, you just see lots of ARP requests, which wouldn't normally happen, but this program specifically sends the ARP requests to, um, as a way to see if the host is there. Now you can only use this on your own flat um, broadcast domain. So you can't use this through routers unless you're doing something tricky, but if you know how to do that, you probably wouldn't need to watch this anyway. But basically if it's on your, your, your own broadcast domain and you've just got a simple network, you can use ARP ping to see if a host is alive, even if they think they're being tricky by blocking ping responses. So that's just another tip for the day, which might come in handy. I plan on using it for this car because I want to set up something where I only want it to do something if the car's not here. And because it doesn't respond to pings, I have to use our ping. So you might find a reason to use it, you might not. It's a bit of info anyway, so enjoy.